Sony just announced the next state of play. Your PS5 just got a secret update. And why does Mark Zuckerberg hate PlayStation? We're gonna find out today's episode of PlayStation News right here on PS Ready. So if you wanna see more news like this, subscribe and set your notifications to all. And if you're looking for any new PS5 accessories, like a headset, a controller, a monitor, anything you can think of, we got you in the links down below. So one of the biggest mysteries related to PlayStation this year has been what the hell is going on with the PC port of Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection. If you don't remember, this came out earlier this year and it's basically a collection of Uncharted 4 and The Lost Legacy, which is a pretty good deal, especially if you had it on PS4, because I don't know, Uncharted 4 is like one of the greatest games of all time, easily in my top five, and The Lost Legacy is one of the best expansion-sized games that Sony's ever made. There's obviously a huge controversy back when it came out because Sony wasn't very clear on the upgrade paths for this game. Like you had to have Uncharted 4 at least, I think, or maybe even both. And they took the bundle off of the PlayStation store so you couldn't get the free or cheaper upgrade. I honestly don't remember what happened because it kind of came and went. But from what I've heard and what I've played, this is a really good upscale remaster, whatever you want to call it, on two of the best games ever made. But when this was announced for PS5 earlier this year, they also announced it for PC with a TBA date on the actual port, and it's been missing in action ever since. But thanks to the Epic Game Store, we now know that it's coming on October 19th. I think the game went up for pre-order or it like leaked or something like that on the Epic Game Store, which has happened before with Sony games. It had that October 19th release date and the pre-order bonus also leaked, which is Sully Seaplane as a glider in Fortnite. That's a nice little bonus if you like the Epic Game Store or Fortnite, but I will definitely be buying this on Steam because it's already on Steam. You can like wishlist it on your account, which I already did. Now, the interesting thing is, even though this leaked, Sony didn't immediately confirm the actual release of this game, which kind of got me thinking why would they just not confirm it it's not that big of a deal right like they announced it a long time ago we've been waiting for it for months now their latest pc release has already come out so what's the hold up Obviously, with all the rumors of a PC launcher, that's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll talk more about the showcase later in this video, but that's obviously coming up here in the month of September, and that kind of seems like the best time to announce that not only is Uncharted The Legacy of Thieves Collection finally coming out on PC this October, but you'll be able to play it on the Sony PC Games Launcher. Now, as a gamer who plays all of their games on PC and PS5 pretty much simultaneously, uh, having a new launcher on my PC doesn't immediately sound like the best option. Option, but the fact that Sony's going to allow cross buy and hopefully fingers crossed cross save that makes me like want it um, like right now I want that launcher so I can buy my games digitally on PS5 and get them on PC and have my saves transferring back and forth because that is like the key to unlocking the PS Vita 2 aka the Steam Deck either way I think I'm going to pick this up on PC whether it runs well on Steam Deck or not just because I want to have uncharted games on PC that's been a dream of mine forever and I'm glad this is coming out sooner rather than later because they can get going on other releases on their slate like Returnal, which has leaked so many times, and also Ghost of Tsushima, which we've heard is being worked on for PC for like over a year at this point. So the new PS5 update is out and people seem to be really enjoying it. I was in the beta, I had it on a couple PS5s and it ran great. I had a couple times where my PS5, like when I would start a game and it would flip my TV into HDR mode, it would just go to a black screen. But once the official version of the update came out, like it came out of beta, that issue completely resolved. And that's honestly the only bug I encountered throughout the entire beta, which ran for about a month. So that's pretty good. I've been using my PS5 on my 1440p monitor at home while I play through The Last of Us Part 1, and it's awesome. I really have no complaints there as far as this update goes. And the features that they have left to include are mostly cosmetic, but there is a really cool secret feature that they didn't advertise in any of the blog posts or anything that people are actually having a lot of fun with. So if you're a trophy hunter like me, one of the most annoying things ever is hidden trophies. In story-based games, like I guess Uncharted or something, I get it because a lot of the trophies pop when you get to certain points in the story and they'll tell you within the description of that trophy that they're like part of the story. So if you see the hidden trophies a little too early, you'll obviously have the game spoiled for yourself, which isn't good. But some trophies that are hidden aren't tied to the story and they're basically popping whenever you do something a certain amount of times in a game. It just happened to me, I think with The Last of Us, 
like I shivved people in stealth mode enough times to pop a trophy. I'm pretty sure that was a hidden trophy, but if it wasn't, you can correct me down in the comments. Either way, there's a new update with this PS5 update that allows you to reveal all of the hidden trophies for a game. So if you're someone who's like playing through The Last of Us Part 1, you've played The Last of Us a few times before, and some of those hidden trophies that they've added to the game. Because if you didn't know, the Platinum Trophy in The Last of Us Part 1 is much easier than it was in Remastered or on the PS3. You can just reveal all of the trophies and get them as you make your way through the game for the first time, instead of having to play it multiple times. It's just like a cool new time-saving feature that I think was really cool, and I don't understand why Sony isn't advertising it. I was definitely into trophies more when I was back in college and I basically had unlimited time and less money and I had to play the same game for months at a time versus playing everything as it came out. But both Spider-Man and Ghost of Tsushima basically reactivated that fire in me where I was like, oh, okay, it's really easy to actually complete these platinum trophies and popping that platinum, that sound you get, it's such a huge dopamine rush that I've kind of gotten back into it and I think I'm gonna go for the platinum in The Last of Us Part One. So now, it's it's gonna get so much easier with this hidden trophy feature. So there's more drama with this whole Activision Blizzard, Xbox, Sony situation. The last time we talked about it, Jim Ryan came out and made a statement like, yo, Phil Spencer, even though he's going around saying he's telling Sony he'll keep uh, Call of Duty on PlayStation going forward, what he actually said to Jim Ryan is that he'll keep the contractual agreement for three years and then keep Call of Duty there for three more years, which would keep it in a total of six. And then after that, it's fair game for them to make it exclusive. I personally think Warzone will always stay multi-platform because they just rake in so much money off the seasons, the cosmetics, and it's just a good advertising point for Microsoft and Game Pass where they're like, yeah, you're enjoying this free to play game? Well, get Game Pass on your Xbox Series X and you can play the campaign of Modern Warfare 9 and the multiplayer along with it. So at the end of the day, it looks like this deal is going to go through and Sony knows that. So what they're doing is just basically defending themselves and making little comments and putting them out into the wild to make this deal harder for Xbox. Because even though it's definitely going to happen, the longer this process of getting it approved by all these different countries and stuff like that goes on, the more money Microsoft has to spend that Sony doesn't actually have to spend, which, you know, is just kind of like shrewd, but respectable business, I would say. It's like right there on the line. I, I don't know. I don't want to make any big sweeping judgments here just yet. Basically, Zuckerberg came to Microsoft's defense and said, yeah, I don't think this will make Microsoft a monopoly if they pick up Activision. Here's why he explained it. Uh, the reason I think he's siding with Microsoft, obviously, is because he makes the MetaQuest, the MetaQuest 2, the biggest competitor to the PSVR, and he sees how much brand cachet Sony has with all of these games that they're making, like Horizon Call of the Mountain, Resident Evil Village's VR mode. The list goes on and on with all the exclusive VR stuff PlayStation is getting. So it helps Mark Zuckerberg to fight PlayStation because taking the Activision games out of the ring as potential VR titles means that all these Activision games could become MetaQuest games in the future. Like, I don't know, just off the top of my head, they could take Modern Warfare Remastered or Modern Warfare 2 Remastered and convert those to MetaQuest games, just like they did with Resident Evil 4 and like they're doing with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Those are just easy examples of, hey, we defended you while you were trying to buy Activision. Now that you have Activision, Activision give us the exclusive on these games versus Sony. This is ultimately tough. I don't like how consolidated everything is getting. I like having a PlayStation. I don't wanna think about the fact that Xbox is going to have all these games that I like in the future, like Elder Scrolls 6, pretty much every Bethesda game going forward, Diablo 4, potentially Diablo 5 in the far off future, Overwatch 2 will probably get some Xbox exclusives, and now Call of Duty. It's just crazy how much stuff Microsoft is buying up, and I see this comparison all the time, where people are like, oh, Sony bought Final Fantasy exclusivity and they're keeping Final Fantasy exclusive. The difference is Call of Duty is very popular on PlayStation, whereas Final Fantasy is not popular at all on the Xbox side of the fence. I guarantee you Square Enix looked at the numbers that they saw from Final Fantasy 15 releasing on Xbox and they were like, well, we didn't make that much money, so we're gonna let Sony keep it exclusive. Speaking of new games though, we gotta talk about this Disney Marvel game showcase. I'm just gonna come out and say it, it was pretty disappointing, just being real with you guys. It was a lot of mobile games, 
games. It was a lot of games we already heard about. We didn't hear anything about Spider-Man 2, Jedi Survivor, uh, the KOTOR remake. We don't know what's going on with that. Wolverine, none of those games were there. But the one thing that was really cool was Amy Hennig's new game. And if you don't know who she is, she's basically like the person behind the first three Uncharted games over at Naughty Dog. She was working on a game called Ragtag over at EA that was a Star Wars game that got canceled. And now she's working on an awesome new game now that has both Captain America and Black Panther, and it takes place in World War II. And I, like they didn't show any gameplay. I love seeing gameplay versus CGI trailers, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This hooked me immediately. If you wanna get me interested in a Marvel game, you put Captain America in it and you have Black Panther being a badass. Like what more can you ask for? Honestly, I'm glad it worked out the way that it did because not only do we have this awesome Marvel game to look forward to, Jeff Grubb also leaked an Iron Man game that's supposedly in development at EA. And I'm looking at this whole situation where the Disney Marvel game showcase sucked uh, as a good thing because it's basically telling me in my mind that all we have to look forward to is the Sony showcase. And the last news story for you guys today is about the brand new state of play that was literally announced while I was recording this video. So at the time of recording, this state of play is going to be tomorrow, September 13th, at 3 p.m. Pacific time, and it's going to be about 20 minutes long. And Sony specifically says, expect reveals, new updates, and fresh gameplay footage for 10 games coming to PS5, PS4, and PSVR 2. And it includes updates from Japanese partners, along with a few other surprises from developers around the world. Oh man, you know what I'm thinking, right? We heard Japanese partners. We know that Silent Hill has been leaking all over the place, like full on screenshots from Bloober Team's remake have come out. This seems like a perfect time for Konami and Sony to announce that that Silent Hill is going to be exclusive to PS5. That just seems like a no brainer. Of course, you know I'm gonna bring up Bloodborne. This is the From Software game that needs an update on PS5 to run at 60 frames per second. Of course, Final Fantasy 16 is going to be exclusive to the PlayStation 5. It would also be a great time for Sony to just finally announce that they bought Square Enix. And Capcom with Resident Evil 4 Remake. Can you imagine if at a state of play, they come out, they say, yep, Final Fantasy 16, it's gory, it's action packed, it's gonna be sweet, coming out next year. Of course, we also have Silent Hill and Silent Hill 2, a new Silent Hill game and a remake of Silent Hill 2. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, we're also giving Bloodborne a 60 frames per second patch and a remake from Bluepoint. That's even crazier. And here's some reveal gameplay of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Drop the mic, Xbox, you're done. And that's just the Japanese game side of it because we could even have some Western games like of course, Jedi Survivor that didn't show up at the Disney event like I just mentioned. Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine would be great to show off there. More updates on the Winter's expansion for Resident Evil Village and they said PSVR 2. So I'm assuming we'll see some gameplay from Resident Evil Village in VR. And fingers crossed, the last thing I really wanna see is of course, the Last of Us multiplayer game. Like in my mind, the best way to release something like that would be as a bonus with a director's cut of The Last of Us Part 2. The Last of Us Part 1 looks absolutely phenomenal, like one of the best looking games I've ever played, and it looks just a hair better now than The Last of Us Part 2. So if they give us that director's cut that just cleans up the textures and brings it in line with The Last of Us Part 1 and maybe adds in a new little DLC update or pie in the sky, like I just mentioned, a code for The Last of Us multiplayer game, that would be absolutely phenomenal. But yeah, I've got some high hopes for this state of play, especially after the last one, because it was like one of the best ever. Hopefully Sony impresses, but man, oh, now I'm excited. I don't wanna wait for this.